Hi, this is John McGee with Hillsborough County Environmental Services. Today I'm here with Ryan Reardon, our erosion control inspector, and he's going to show us the kind of things that he looks for on a construction site. How you doing, Ryan? Doing great. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. All right, so what are you going to show us? Well, we're pretty much just going to go through my checklist on every inspection report that I do when I when I arrive on the site. Okay. You ready to get started? Yeah, let's go. You got your hard hat? I got it right here. Perfect. All right, let's go. Well, John, when we first arrive on site, the first thing we look for are the proper permits. Okay. Usually you can find them in the job box located on site. What we're looking for is the NOI, the notification of intent uh, for the CGP, your construction generic permit. Oh, who issues that permit? DEP, the Department of Environmental Protection. Okay, and is that something all construction sites have to get? Well, usually sites that d disturb land greater than an acre are required to apply for the permit. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, everything looks in order here. You want to go ahead and view this site? Yeah, let's do it. We're going to go take a look at the stormwater pollution prevention plan right now. Okay, where's that? Well, it's generally located within the construction trailer on site. Okay. Let's go take a look. All right. Here we are, here's the swip book I was talking about. Let's go and take a look through this. Okay. As you can see, when you're flipping through it, you'll find the NOI, just like the NOI that we saw in the permit box, right. just right outside. As well as you see a construction overview about the project, just so we kind of know what, what, what we're getting into. Let's go ahead and look through the inspection reports, because they're also listed in here. Now these are done every seven days, as well as when there's 0.5 inches of rain within a 24 hour period. Okay, so these are inspections that the contractor is doing to show that he's keeping up with the erosion control. Correct. Uh, he'll, li he'll list the violations as well as when he made the repairs. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look. As, as you can see, this is actually pretty well upkept. The last inspection was done yesterday and it looks like he's keeping up every seven days. And here we go with the after rain inspection where there's 0.7 inches. Okay. This is a great, Great trip right here. Let's go ahead and look at the site plan. Everything seems to be in order right here. As you can see in the site plan, this is kind of a construction overview, which kind of lets us know what's what's going on in the current phase. It'll have all the BMPs listed. Uh, and as we can see here, I mean, we pretty much know what's going on. So let's okay. go ahead and take a look outside and let's, let's get it going. All right, let's do it. All right. So I see some silt fence over here. This is something you look for, right? Yes, this is your standard perimeter control. Uh, we obviously look for it to be trenched in as well as it to be vertical to help prevent the sediment from, from going off site. We also want the stakes to be pointed towards the area you're, you're protecting. Now, as you can see, I'm off site. If I was sediment, I'd be a violation. You are obviously on site. If you were sediment, you're okay. Here we stumbled across some bad silt fence. Uh, as you can see, it's been overtopped. Uh, there's a potential for sediment to erode off the site, which would be a violation. Uh, usually when a site contractor would see this, they would need to have this reinstalled or fixed. This is definitely something that I would note on my report because there's nothing that is, is preventing this soil from going off site right now. Right. See, this is an unstabilized lot right here. What does that mean exactly? Well, as you see, the water I'm pouring here allows for the sediment to erode off site. We can't have that. So in this case, you'll want to stabilize the area within seven days to prevent this from happening. Okay. This is a treaty barrier. It protects the receiving water bodies from the active site. Receiving water bodies like lakes, ponds, streams, creeks, rivers, yeah. wetlands, bogs, swamps. I think I get it. Fin, moor, sinkhole, sea, ocean. A any water. Any water. Yeah, any water. Any water. I get it. From a receiving site. Not giving, but receiving. Kind of like a birthday present. It's this water's birthday every day. 
except the only present it receives is more water. Except it doesn't like dirt in its water, and we don't like dirt in our water. Got it. Where did Ryan go? This is an unstable stockpile. This is bad. <laughs> I like this stockpile. This is stable. Bad. Good. Bad. Good. So, Ryan, I noticed this site is really, really clean. Are all construction sites like that? Yeah, one of the requirements is to make sure all construction debris and material like paint, oil, and trash is properly contained and disposed of. Over here we have a great example of inlet protection. As you can see right here with this inlet sock pipe that is preventing any of the sediment from eroding into the mouth of the inlet. Uh, generally this does have to be cleaned out pretty regularly as you will have constant tracking or erosion towards the street. Uh, this is a great example. However, over here... This is a bad example of inlet protection. As you can see there's nothing here preventing anything from entering into the mouth of the inlet. This is bad. Good. Bad. So Ryan, how long do these BMPs last? What can you tell me about maintenance? Well, these BMPs can actually get damaged any time of the day. It's the site contractor's or the construction worker's responsibility to fix them as they get damaged. When I perform an inspection, I check every BMP on site to make sure they're in good working order. Now, as you can see, this site has no problem whatsoever. They're in great shape. All right. Hey, thanks for showing me around. Uh, anytime.